mind you, I actually had met Brent Fitz, so my current drummer. I had met him randomly. Uh, it's such a fun story because uh, when me and this guy met, it was just immediately like we're friends. We just talk about coffee and guitars and music. So we're all, you know, just we love the same stuff, right? So randomly, I, I see him at a sushi joint in Vegas, and um, I was with a friend who had opened for Slash. So I didn't know Brent personally, but I knew him from uh, he played with Alice Cooper. So I knew that. That's all I knew. And uh, we get introduced to each other, and we talked all night about, you know, all sorts of stuff. So then he was like, hey, let's get a coffee, and we'll hang. So for the next, uh, roughly, I think it was like maybe a year or so, we just hung out. And there was no promise of any sort of gig. I just knew he played with Slash, and we would just chat about, you know, his travels and blah, 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 my travels. And if you could believe this, this is my I love this story because it's just so, uh, looking back on it, I, I don't know how I wasn't... Uh, more exhausted but last minute they had gotten rid of their guitar player in slash's band so you know at the time it wasn't called slash featuring miles kennedy and the conspirators it was just slash featuring yeah. miles kennedy you know and um they had this other guitar player and they they got rid of him in uh right towards the end of their recording of apocalyptic love which is the first conspirators title so uh brent i, I get a call from him like hey um you know, this is, uh, I don't know if you can make this happen, but, you know, he kind of prepped me for, there was some time like back and forth, like, look, this might happen. Can you come down to LA? Uh, we're trying out guitar players. And so he gave me like, you know, there was a couple weeks notice of like, okay, well, this might happen. Maybe you could do it. If you can come down, we'll figure it out. And I was, I'm in the middle of a tour. So I'm back in Canada with the, with the cab. Right. So this was, uh, Super Bowl Sunday, 2012. So in February, and I ended up, getting the green light. So I buy a plane ticket. It was the only day off we had. So it just perfectly worked out. It was on a Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. I flew from Toronto to Los Angeles to, uh, I went straight to the uh, rehearsal space <clears throat> and just auditioned for Slash uh, based on, and they took, you know, because of Brent's recommendation, he, he just said, this is a guy I know. And it wasn't, it wasn't an open call. It was definitely like one of those, like, you know, hey, we got a friend. I think, you know, we could trust him, have him come down kind of thing. So uh, went down there and just played a bunch of the slash solo songs and played paradise city and it just felt great like the guys it was so loose and everybody had a good time and uh i just thought no matter what you know if i, I walk away from this like that was cool you know totally. i flew i left at 6 a.m toronto time so i was you know i got to la i was out of my mind but you know i'm high from the experience i'm feeling great and we just we gelled and so i walked away thinking look if i don't get the gig i, I had a good time with these guys we played paradise city i played it with slash I can walk with that, and that's a that's a high note, whatever. And um, about I think the next morning, I fl at three a.m. I flew to Buffalo and met up with the tour again. And so uh, two days later, I'm in Allentown, Pennsylvania, and I get a text from Slash, and he's like, "Hey man, I'm gonna call you uh, tomorrow." And that's all I get. I'm like, "Okay, sounds good, man." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so like, how are you supposed to function, right? Yeah, I was like, "What? Oh, okay, sounds good, man." You know, talk to you soon. So then he calls me after sound check, and he's just cool as hell. Like, "Hey, man, how's it going? How's your uh, how's your gig?" Blah blah blah. And uh, he's like, "So, by unanimous decision, uh, we want you in the band." I mean, how do you feel about that? <laughs> I was like, uh, "You know," and I got so much going on. I'm good. And then I hung up the phone. That's not true. So I, <laughs> I said, Hey dude. Uh, no, I said, uh, absolutely. I would love to, I, you know, and he just, he was so cool, man. Cause he doesn't even know this, but, uh, he goes, well, is there anything you need? Like, do you need any gear? Do you need a, any amps or guitars? Like, you know, he's asking me this and to answer his question, truthfully, uh, I absolutely needed amps and I needed more guitars cause I only had three guitars worth touring with and I only had one killer amp. So I was like, I don't have any backups. And with running with Slash's World, you need two separate rigs of, at a minimum, two heads, uh, two cabinets, eight, eight to 10 guitars in each rig. You know what I mean? And I only had three. But I lied to him and said, no, 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 I'm good. <laughs> I got everything. And so uh, just to make sure I was solidified and I didn't have any sort of hiccups, I just said yes. And uh, through Brent and a, and a lot of friends and Gibson Guitars uh, coming through, they said, look, you know, they loaned me a couple of guitars. They ended up just letting me keep, and I ended up buying a bunch over time. But, uh, you know, I, I really I worked hard to make that work. But 
you know, in hindsight, knowing Slash now, it would have been as simple as like, a, what do you need? Okay, no problem. But <laughs> well, you know. I mean, hey, you're just you're in a in your head into Buffalo, mm-hmm. and you're thinking about that gig. You're not thinking about, you know, you're just happy to be out touring, right? On the other one, right? And the next Absolutely. thing you know, you get this gig. And so, walking into that audition with Slash, like your minds, obviously, you have a bit of background because you're talking to Fitz, and you guys have been talking. Are you yeah. going in with these songs already in the can? Were you woodshedding at home, like just on your own, just like, hey, maybe one day I'll get to play with Slash? Or is it just you, you know, you're such a consummate pro, you got these things, you know, in your back pocket and you can just rock it at any point. And which is a lesson, I think, you know, anybody listening who is wondering about how this business works, this could be a very valuable lesson for you. So how does Frank walk into rehearsal and nail it? Well, for me, I'm the uh, man, and, and my wife will completely agree, and and we could do a whole podcast on this alone. But my preparation and my the way how I like to be prepared is just overly. It's just ridiculous. Like I I go above and beyond to where I just need to relax, and I shouldn't do it as much as I do. But you know, I worry a lot. Like <laughs> so. You know, with this, with the audition process, it was like, hey, Brent, like, what songs do you, what are you going to play? What do you think we're going to play? He's like, I really don't know. And I'm like, well, okay, shit, no problem. But I could wing it if we have to. But, I, you know, of course, you want to be prepared as you, as you can be. But I learned that uh, most of the time that I sweat and then I worry about things like, man, I'm going to be, you know, I've played corporate gigs with dudes that are just crazy pros, crazy, you know, like, they have this reputation of, uh, or, or, you know, whatever you think about these people. And you're like, man, I wonder how this guy's going to be if I don't show up and I don't know every single note to this song. I know this guy's going to call me out on it. Or, you know, I think I'm just curious, you know, I have no idea how it's going to go. And I assume the worst. And, uh, ultimately by assuming the worst, I prepare and I show up and 99% of the time, everything is way easier than I prepared for. You know what I mean? Like, I roll in there stressing out, like learning the songs, note for note. And uh, everybody there is like, wait, so how does that drum intro go again? And I'm like, oh, man, you know, <laughs> but but I will say that has definitely uh, helped me ultimately uh, brought out the best in me is that I. I prepare almost for the worst. And, you know, there's plenty of times where it's like you roll in and it's like, oh, you know what? We don't have a set. We don't have anything going on. You just wing it. And that's always cool because it's loose, you know, but the way I've always operated was uh, it's like, okay, give me the set list and I'm going to, I'm going to crush this. I'm going to just study it as much as I can uh, and learn the songs better as, as good as I possibly can, you know? And, and I roll in there uh, over overly prepared usually. Thanks for stopping by friends to the Brenton on tour podcast channel on YouTube, coffee, music, travel, life, all of those things, one page, lots of guests, lots of chatter. We talk about all of it. If you like it, subscribe hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment. I'll get back to you. Thanks friends. See you next time.